Now that the Neo ET7 has launched in Europe, there are quite a few reviews out there. The one thing that's lacking from most is a review of the entire experience. You don't get the nitty gritty details about what owning, or I guess what subscribing is actually like. When it comes to Neo in particular, there's a lot more to the Neo user experience than just the car. Neo does things differently. With Neo, you have the Neo user driven community, you have battery as a service, you have battery swapping, you have the Neo lifestyle products, you have worry free service that gives you peace of mind, no matter the situation. The problem with just reviewing the car itself means that you don't cover a whole lot of what makes Neo interesting or what adds value to you as a consumer. But of course, as evidenced from all of the awards that the Neo ET7 has been receiving in Europe recently, the car is very high quality. While giving a review of the car itself tells a lot of the story, it doesn't tell the whole story. So while today's video is primarily about the Neo ET7 vehicle, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future videos so that you can learn more about the entire experience of owning or subscribing to a Neo in Europe. The Neo ET7 is uh, five meters long or so. It's pretty wide, it goes pretty fast. You can get all of the detailed specs or details of the driving dynamics of the car in probably every other review and from people far more qualified than I. So I'm not gonna bore you with that here. Instead, I'm gonna bore you with other things. First, the car is very comfortable, not just the soft air suspension that makes driving over bumps a breeze, but also the whisper quiet ride, even at high speeds. The ET7 has high quality soft materials throughout the entire interior space. You can see and feel the attention to detail everywhere in the car. Any area inside the car that you might touch is soft with stitching that is low key and tasteful, not overdone like some other Chinese cars. The car overall has a minimalist aesthetic, but I wouldn't say that it is Spartan. Everything that you see is useful, but any other extraneous bells and whistles are left behind. It is very evident that the designers had a lot of freedom when making this car. To ditch some of the design ideas from the first gen platform videos, iterate on other ideas, and ultimately to bridge the gap from NT 1.0 to 2.0 that feels new and different but also consistent from last generation with instantly recognizable Neo design language and sensibilities. I had two Neo ET7s during my month with the car and both of them were very well put together without any obvious flaws in their build quality, both exterior and interior. There were no obvious misaligned panels or gaps and when picking up your future ET7, poor build quality is not going to be something that you necessarily need to be on the lookout for. The operating system is mostly intuitive and super easy to use. On its face, it resembles the operating system present in a Tesla or many other primarily touch-based car operating systems. But in practice, it is actually quite different. Between the highly customizable quick access menu that is always just a swipe from the left away, to the programmable smart actions that can be programmed to activate when meeting certain conditions, the operating system in the ET7 is very elegant, highly responsive, and simple to learn. It also starts up near instantaneously, which is of course faster than NT 1.0 platform vehicles. The mobile app handles major common functions such as climate control and door locks, but it is a bit lacking compared to Neo in China. I will do a full video demonstrating the app in Europe in the very near future, so stick around for that. Voice control with Nomi in English is far from flawless, but she gets the job done most of the time. She is capable of understanding and responding to what I would call normal everyday language and simple commands. But if you speak with a strange syntax, advanced vocabulary, or give her multiple commands at the same time, she will fail to complete her tasks. There is a lot of room for improvement with Nomi in English, and I can only assume in other languages as well. When it comes to Nomi voice control, there are some weird issues that don't make much sense to me, but I'm sure they will be solved quickly enough through updates. The most obvious flaw that I've found is that Nomi doesn't even know the words that are specific to the functions of the car programmed yet. What I mean by that is that, let's say you want her to turn on the fragrance. The car has three fragrance slots and it comes with three different fragrance packs installed. If you ask her to turn on the fragrance, she will always turn on the first one. If I say, hey Nomi, turn on the adventure fragrance or the haven fragrance, she can't differentiate between the two. Also, if you tell her to turn on the roll function in the massage or the catwalk function, she can't figure that out either. Similarly, she can't turn on functions like camp mode or pet mode. Now, I'm of course no expert on voice control or AI or anything like that, but it seems like the one of the first things you would do when making a voice controlled AI, especially one that is highly specialized, like say an AI that's controlling functions in your car, one of the first things I would personally do is make her aware and able to control all of said functions in the car. I would make sure that she has all of the vocabulary that is present within the menus in the operating system. As it stands currently, if I ask her to put on the fragrance and I want the second fragrance or the third fragrance in the list, I need to first ask her to turn it on and then I need to physically select a different one on the touchscreen, which makes the voice functionality for certain specific use cases kind of worthless, at least currently. One thing Nomi is great at recognizing, however, is who specifically is speaking to her. 
No matter where you sit in the car, you can simply ask her to do something for you and she will do it. There's no need to specify things like right rear, front passenger. Just say, turn on mine, turn off my. It's very cool. The new cameras and sensors make things like auto parking a breeze, both in regular parking lots and when parallel parking in tiny European streets. Or if you want to do it yourself, the 360 camera, new wheel or curb cameras, and even further improved transparent chassis feature that now gives you levels of see-throughness, you will never feel overwhelmed trying to enter a tight space while traffic is piling up behind you. I guess now we should probably talk about charging. I will say that the charging speed is not particularly fast, but that the charging curve holds steady throughout much of the charging process. The fastest I ever saw charging top out at was at an Ionity station and it charged at 98 kilowatts for a decent chunk of time. And most of my time charging on DC fast chargers, the charging peaked around 90 kilowatts. This isn't really fast compared to some others, but at the same time, I don't think it really matters all that much. And let me tell you why. With a warm battery, you can still get something like 10% to 80% in around 35 minutes. Yes, other cars are faster. Maybe they might claim 18 to 20 minutes to get the same state of charge. But in my opinion, and based on my own charging experiences, functionally, there is very little difference in 20 minutes of charging versus 30 or 35. Either way, your charging stop plays out the same way. You have to get out, you have to walk around, use the toilet, get a bite to eat, get a drink, whatever you want to do, and then you head back to your car. Yes, okay, I understand 20 minutes is less than 35, but at that point, there isn't really a huge difference functionally in how your charging stop plays out. The real difference is battery swap. A five minute charging stop plays out vastly different. Five minutes is very different from 18, 20, or 30. Additionally, it gets you to 90% and not just 80. You take any of those cars, ET7 included, from 80 to 90% and the charging times start to converge towards the upper end. Unfortunately, currently there just aren't very many power swap stations in Europe. The slowest charging speed of the ET7 will be a thing of the past once Neo builds out their infrastructure. If they never manage to build sufficient battery swap infrastructure, then their slow charging speed will remain a negative compared with many other electric vehicles. That's a rundown of the basics and now let's get more into the nitty gritty good, bad, and ugly about having a Neo ET7. Some of the following sets of comments are specifically in comparison to my former Neo EC6. And I've got videos linked in the description if you want to see how the ET7 has improved over platform 1.0 cars and specifically my EC6. First, even in minus 14 degrees Celsius weather, without warming up the car, the door handles had zero problems popping out. Gen 1 Neos and other cars with similar flush door handles are prone to freezing, but not so here. Also, the car can heat up super quickly. It melts snow on the windshield with the quickness. And just in general, the climate control in the car functions much more efficiently than the NT 1.0 vehicles. Moving on, Neo Pilot is capable of taking turns at decent speeds. It no longer slows down to unsafe speeds on the highway on a slightly banked turn. You can even set Neo Pilot to up to 180 kilometers per hour. Not saying that you should, but you can. I never once encountered phantom braking, but I did feel like at times it struggled more than it should have to maintain its lane, which is weird because I didn't get that feeling in the EC6 very often. Disabling Neo Pilot, the current max speed of the Neo ET7 is currently 200 kilometers per hour. And I do apologize for prior to launch, I was told, or at least I thought I was told that they will remove that upper limit with a software update, but they haven't done that yet. Maybe in the future they will. Currently, we're still stuck at 200 kilometers per hour. Next, there are new features like dog mode and camp mode that are welcome additions. I'm sure my dog Easy would have loved to have dog mode on our road trips in China. Dog mode is also super cute with a new animation on Nomi. For complete and total peace of mind for you and your pet, I do think that the instrument cluster should also display that pet mode is on with some sort of animation or words as well, but that's just a small nitpick. Compared to my Neo EC6, the trunk light is literally night and day. The light in the EC6 was pretty much useless. The trunk light in the ET7 is the opposite, highly functional, no more need for an extra flashlight. The interior ambient lighting is also so much better than Gen 1 cars. You might remember that I complained that the ambient lighting in the EC6 seemed a bit shit. It didn't go all the way from corner to corner, it had dead ugly zones, and it just didn't look that nice. Of course it is simply an aesthetic thing, and it really has no functional use, but man the waterfall lighting and other ambient lights just look about a million times better here in the ET7. One thing that does suck though, is the window switches are definitely on backwards. Everyone who sits in the car says the exact same thing, so I know it isn't just me. There are some people who play first person shooter video games with their analog sticks inverted, so there are sickos out there, and I guess those must be the same people that decided to make the window buttons backwards on the ET7. 
Even after a month of driving the car every day, even when consciously thinking about it and trying to do it the right way, I still push the wrong way first every single time. When it comes to the dash cam, you can also see a massive improvement. I've made a video about this, you can watch it, but let's just say on the EC6, the dash camera was embarrassingly bad and pretty much useless, and now it's very good, and there are a lot of other cameras surrounding the whole entire car that are also highly functional and will protect you and give you peace of mind should anything happen to your vehicle. You may also remember that the wireless charging pad for my EC6 uh, it kind of held a charge, but it didn't actually really power up the phone. Well, the ET7 phone charger can now charge your phone. Fancy that. It isn't fast, but it does do it. So that's an improvement. Of course, you also have plenty of USB ports scattered around the car in case you want to wire charge. I was able to charge my MacBook, my camera, my watch, and other devices using the plethora of ports in the car. So slow wireless charging really should be a non-issue. When it comes to media and apps in the car, there's not much currently. Neo does give you a free six month trial to title, and the car also has the Spotify app, but there are currently no other media apps, no Netflix, no Steam, no Apple Music, nothing. There is Tide, which has meditation and nap modes, which is great, but there is a dearth of other multimedia options currently available. I'm positive over time there will be more media apps available via updates, but as it stands, there's not much out there. I think the availability of Neo AR glasses in the future is also a really cool possibility, but currently not available in Europe. And the lack of media options is kind of a shame considering the incredible speaker system in the car. You can watch my music reaction videos linked to hear more, but the sound quality is vastly improved over the EC6, which already had very good speakers. For some people, a lack of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is also a huge negative, but I personally don't really feel like they are necessary, so it isn't really a negative for me. But uh, just be aware, if that's something you need, the car currently doesn't have it. I didn't drive in the snow too much. It was very cold, but only a couple of days I actually had to drive in very low levels of snow. And the car made me feel very safe and secure in the snow drive mode. But uh, I don't really have too much to say on that. I did slip and fall on my ass while walking to my car. And then the car had no problems with traction on that very same icy road that I slipped and fell on. So at the very least, the car has better traction than my own sneakers. Kicking to open the trunk works more consistently than it did on the EC6, so that's a bonus. The only real knock I have on the ET7 in comparison to the platform 1.0 cars, such as my EC6, is that the seat heating and steering wheel heating are very, very poor. They're lukewarm at best, even at the highest settings. One thing that hasn't changed at all from the EC6 to the ET7 that bugged me on that car and bugs me on this car is the SOS light next to the SOS button, it's like a green laser. Daytime, dusk, it's no problem, but driving at night when it's dark outside, that light is just constantly in my field of vision and it gives me a really bad headache. And so in my EC6, I put black electrical tape over it and I probably would have done that in the ET7 if I had been driving at night, but I, I wasn't driving too much at night. I really wish you could toggle it off, but you can't. So after putting 5,000 kilometers combined on two different ET7s, driving to nine different European countries, sleeping in the car overnight, on multiple occasions, driving through pouring rain, falling snow, I think that I can safely say that the car is, is great. It is overall vastly improved over Neo's first generation cars. But I will say that for me, it's not an ideal road trip machine. That isn't to say that I didn't really love taking the car on the road trip, I did, but if you're looking to spend a lot of time in the car and cover vast distances, I would hold out for an SUV. I personally would choose a brand new EC7 that was just announced at Neo Day, but also the EL7 or the new ES8 would also probably do a better job as a road trip vehicle or a family vehicle. With the ET7, the space in the trunk is quite small. So if you're more than two people, you probably won't have tons of space for your, your belongings. Sleeping in the back seat also isn't great, although camp mode does help improve the experience quite a bit. Charging is relatively slow, Lack of infrastructure for battery swap removes some of the Neo advantage. I think that this car is ideal for a business person who has a home charger and a daily commute that doesn't cover vast distances. I don't think it's a great family vehicle. And to be fair, I don't think it was designed to be. The car will have frequent updates, of course, as well as the Neo app and the network infrastructure. So the experience of owning a Neo should only improve as time goes on. Meaning that most of the issues users might experience currently 
will be non-issues in the near future. The space in the back seat is incredible and most average proportion full-size adults will have plenty of room in the rear row. It is, however, disappointing that the rear seats can't fold down, but seeing as how it is a car for a business person, I would say that he probably would find more value in making sure that his guests will have a pleasant experience riding in his car than he would value hauling lots of goods in his car. I think the trade-off is probably going to be worth it for this car's ideal customer. The car is smooth as silk and everything is top quality, which means that to you, this theoretical business person who's considering this car, you could certainly send this car to the airport to pick up some executives or business partners who just flew in for a meeting with your company and you definitely wouldn't feel embarrassed about it. I also think that this car suits the idea of a subscription model better than say a Neo ET5 for example. And I'll have more on why that is in an upcoming review of the Neo subscription in Europe. I also have videos on most of what I've already covered in this video from cat mode to battery swapping to autopilot. So if you would like more detailed videos about each of those modes, feel free to check out the links in the description to my other videos. So let me know what you think of the ET7 in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye bye.